Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. And in this video, we are going to take a look at uh, Mari. This is Mari 4, which was released just before Christmas now. So this is going to be a video where we, we cover pretty much everything you need to know in order to get up and running with Mari. Mari is, is a tool I've been using a lot over the last few years, and I really like it. It's, it's a fantastic texturing tool, and um, it's like the most powerful texturing tool out there in terms of just pure performance. So, a fantastic tool, and uh, I hope you guys find this to be useful. It does also require quite some, like some beefy hardware in terms yes. of your graphics card. That's true. So, in this machine, we have a 970 uh, Ti from GeForce, a GTX 970 Ti. And like in a production, we probably use a Quadro card. Mm. The Quadro cards cost several thousand pounds yeah. or dollars. Um, you, you'll be able to, like I would say like a mid to a high range graphics card from, yeah. from GeForce, you'll be able to get away with like hobby level kind of whatever you want to do. Just yeah. keep that in mind that it's not really going to work too well in low end graphics cards. Yeah, it's, it's not like ZBrush which will run no. anything. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, before I start off, there is a non-commercial version of Mari as well, which you can find on the Founders website, which can do most things this one can. It has a few limitations here and there, like maximum six UDIMs, I believe. Mm. But in general, it's going to work perfectly fine. So let's get started with this. So this is what you're going to see the first time you open up Mari. And if you right click now, you can. You, this is how you make a new project. Just hit the new. And now we get up new project. So now we're just going to call this uh, East. Capture is on. <laughs> and so first thing we've got to do is we've got to put in the geometry path here. Mari will not work unless you have geometry uh, uh, geometry loaded. And this piece of geometry has to have UVs as well. And it has to have UVs based on UDIMs. Uh, if, you, if you're if you not familiar with UDIMs, just check out our other video, video on UDIMs where we explain that. Oh, it's almost like we were planning this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we get a few, we get a few different settings here. Uh, we don't really have to change anything here. We we get it. We, this is all the channels which will be created here, uh, and uh, which which um, shader this will be based on. Actually, let's just change this just to general, and let's just set this to color. This is just going to keep it simple for us. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about shaders or a, a physically based rendering workflow, PBR, or anything like this. This is just going to be very simple. So these are just channels that are created from, from the get-go. Yeah. And you can always create these channels later on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, geometry, and then we set lighting as well. Uh, just leave this as default. Color settings, leave everything at default. And then we just hit uh, create new project. And then, then you're done. And that, that's, that's it. That's so. how you use Mari. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another thing that's also worth mentioning. I think um, when you when you boot up Mari, you see the at the bottom there was like a how much space you have left. Mm. Like Mari archives can get pretty hefty. Yeah. So it's it's worth maybe even like if you know you're doing big projects, having a dedicated hard drive. Yeah. Just for the Mari archive Definitely. stuff. Definitely. If if you're if you're just doing stuff like ten UDIMs or whatnot and a few layers, that might get like a few gigabytes. Mm. But if you're doing like uh, Full on production stuff, 50, 50 UDIMs and a bunch of stuff. Like you're talking maybe 50 to 100 gigabytes. Yeah. So they recommend that you run an SSD yeah. drive on it as well. Which we do here. So, yeah. so this is what you can see when you first open up Mari here. The first thing we're going to talk about is navigation, which is uh, Alt left mouse button just to navigate, uh, to rotate, Alt middle mouse button to pan and alt right mouse button to zoom. So you also have those tools in the right hand corner of the of the UI. Yeah. So it's like it'll kind of help you along the way as you click a hotkey to see okay what's possible to do with this kind of hotkey. Yeah. So um, you can also hit the control R key. This is uh, this is to um, to rotate the viewport like this because sometimes you'll 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 just rotate around and you're crazy off axis. <laughs> uh, control R will just allow you to just reset this. The, if, we're also going to look just a look at some of the preferences real quick, just because this is a behavior you can disable. It's incredibly frustrating. This keeps happening that you just go like, and now you're just offset. So um, we're just going to go quickly to um, edit preferences. And pretty much the one thing here you can change is you can change here to orbit and lock to world up. This means it's not going to go absolutely crazy. So we're going to enable this. You can also just set this here, the control type here for navigation to something, whatever you prefer. We're not really going to change anything else at this point. So let's briefly take a look at um, 
at the interface here. So here to the left, we have a bunch of tools we're going to use. This is where the general tools we're using for texture painting will live. If you click on them, you, you can see that this opens up uh, a bunch of different tools as well. And you can also see the hotkey here. For instance, paint through is the hotkey U. So if you are using an older version of Mari, like some, some studios and some other places might be using an older version like Mari 3.3, the interface will look slightly different. The hotkeys are pretty much going to be the same, but instead of having them be nested like this, they're just going to be a bunch of tools down here. So all our tools will be living here and all our, um, all our menus will pretty much be here. All the, like the channels and colors and all, all these kind of things will be living here. And then we have a bunch of things up here as well, such as uh, we can undo, uh, control C, all these, th this is all just hotkey based, but you have all the settings here. Uh, you can, uh, you have sessions. We're not going to cover that in this video though. We can um, go to the project settings. You can save, you can close the document. We have a bunch of selection tools here, which we will cover a little bit. Uh, we have objects, such as if you want to add new objects to it, a bunch of channel tools here layer tools, uh, patches tools, uh, filters, quite handy as well. If you want to blur something, you can just go here. But we will cover some of these more later on. This is just to show you generally where the interface, how the interface works here. Uh, we also have color space down here, which is important. We're, we're, we're going to keep this video fairly light. So there are a lot of things we're not going to cover. It's just so that you know where they're living. Um, up here as well, you can also toggle between perspective and ortho view, which is quite useful. I prefer to to paint this just an ortho view, just because that just keeps a bit uh, it just keeps a bit simpler for me. But then, if you do paint an ortho view, there's one thing I recommend changing. And that's disabling the grid, which you can do under view, display properties, and here you have a bunch of uh, of general display properties like color for things and and all kinds of various things like the HUD. You have the HUD will be down here, which gives you um, Gives you really nice tips about your the currently select select tool. I generally keep this off because after a while you you know most of the hotkeys and all that. But disable the grid. This is just really annoying. Like yeah. if, if this is an ortho, it just looks it, it just confuses my eyes because it's it shouldn't be an ortho. So uh, so disable the grid. But having the HUD on in the beginning when you're using Mar is really helpful. Definitely. Because it's just, there's a lot of hot keys to keep track of, yeah. like when any other software, when you just get started. Yeah. It also displays a, co a couple of different uh, things here as well, like selected patches, how many do you have, what color space there are, uh, paint buffer, all these kind of things here. So what uh, what's a patch? So a patch is, um, that is a UDIM. So essentially, Mari is based heavily on, on UDIMs. So if you click... Um, if you click the ortho uh, UV here, you can see that we when I have the UV view here, and we have uh, uh, and we have uh, the the regular three D view, we can see our character. So Mari is very much based around uh, UDIMs. So it like we said, you have to keep this in the UDIM section. If you keep if you keep textures here, it's Mari is simply just not going to support it. UDIMs, which they call patches. Yes, <laughs> uh, the, the, for selection, oh, okay, uh, it, yeah. it, is, it is called UDIMs uh, mm. in general. So if you if you hit the S key. Uh, that, that's a selection tool up here. You can now just uh, left mouse button, drag around it, and you can s just select it. If you hold down uh, the shift key, you're adding to this, and if you hold the control key, you're subtracting from this. So it's kind of like standard sort of yeah. selection, uh, yeah. adding and subtracting. Very much so. So if you want to hide this, you just hit the H, H key. If you want to um, so if you want to like hide the legs here, for instance, you can just select them real quick, hold down the S key, select and drag and just um, hit the H key. If you want to bring everything back, you have Control Shift H. And if you want to isolate something, that's just Shift H. You can find all these here if you go to Selection uh, and Visibility. Oh, sorry, right click and Visibility. You have a bunch of these here. And we also have them up here as well. You also have a bunch of these um, uh, visibility tweaks uh, up here as well. So that's quite useful. A lot of menu items to sort of play around with. Yeah. <laughs> it just takes a while to get uh, familiar with it all. Yeah, the interface in Mari is a bit overwhelming in the beginning. Uh, but that's why we are we are only going to show a couple of different tools here in uh, in this video here. We're not going to go through everything because that would just be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like a five, six hour video. Yeah, easily. So um, so that's that's basic navigation and, uh, and patches. We really just want to cover patches before anything else because that's just... That's just 
how everything works. Uh, in the UDIM video, we talked about how UDIMs are selection sets in Mari, and this is really what we mean. If you want to use this as as selections, you really just gotta you really just gotta make your UDIM your UDIM layout based on how you want this here to be selected here. That's real. I mean, when when you're modeling and if you're working with a texture artist or if you're working with yourself, like having a good UV layout, sort of like where you cut everything in your model, it just makes your life easier, both in terms of modeling and in terms of texturing. Absolutely. It's, it's really, really key. Yeah. Like the way I see this, uh, UV mapping is the first step in texturing. Yeah. So what we also need to do now is we need to change the light. So you can see here that it gets a bit nasty here in the bottom. You can't really see what's going on here. And here it's really flat. Lights in Mari are a bit weird. <laughs> so let's just close everything here and then we can go to lights. Yeah, that was something we talked about just before this video is that they really condensed and, and made it easy to have, you know, the overwhelming UI. They really made a good effort mm. to sort of minimize it by just yeah. you close it off, but you still have access to all your all your menus to the right. Yeah, exactly. So. This used to be such a mess, <laughs> <laughs> but now it's a, it's a lot easier. So you can just click where you, what you want here, and you can click this guy here to to dock it over. So there are a couple of different uh, uh, there are there are a lot of different lights here, and uh, we're just going to disable everything apart from the first one here, and uh, just click the light bulb. So you can see here what's happening now. This is based on the scene. We don't really want that. Well, you you might. Uh, I I don't want that. <laughs> I want to have this based on a camera so that this is all. So this is consistent here. So you can see now that it's weird. It's way too high contrast. So we can just go down here to, to the position. And this is where we can just really make something which works for us. I prefer something like this, which has some contrast, but uh, but it isn't but it isn't crazy. This is so that I can actually view my uh, I can view my texture in a fairly honest way. Yeah, and this way you're always viewing the part that you're painting. Yeah. If it's like this, it's way <laughs> like you can't see anything. It's all obscured. Oh, wait, wait, this, this could be really good. Like if you if you have like a, let's say you do a preset on one, that's where you do your regular albedo map, and then on two, that's where you want to do the bump and spec. Yeah. You just want to see something really high contrast in order to highlight the For the, sure. the bump there. So you could definitely do something like this when yeah. you do. So I, I generally just disable all light, but yeah, like Martin says, you can definitely have mm -hmm. different ones here. I prefer just to stick with one light here. Yeah, because that that's simple. You can add something here like a rim light as well but uh <laughs> you're really fancy light setup. yeah super fancy keep it keep it to one light if you prefer very much up to you uh, so so now we can actually work with this because before it's it's really hard to actually do something here so now let's talk about the paint buffer the paint buffer is one of the core concepts of mari and it's something that i feel a lot of guys in the beginning don't fully understand so if we just make sure we're on a layer we'll cover this more later on and we hit the P key oh, for paint. The layers went away. That's right. All right. The sometimes do that when, uh, <laughs> if you if you just click it, click it here, they're just popping out and then they're disappearing after a while. Ah, so that's quite useful. So that's new in Mario Four. Yeah, definitely. So now you can see we're painting here now, and um, this is not painting in the same way that you're used to painting in something like ZBrush or Substance, where this is based on the normal. You can see here that the brush doesn't actually change. Like if, if I'm going over all this, the brush doesn't really care. The brush here is purely screen based, which means that if we're painting here and um, and you hit the B key to bake it, it's now just baked down, but you're gonna see, there are some gonna be some area, some errors now. Uh, ah. <laughs> no errors. <laughs> no errors. Oh, actually that's because um, this is, um, we'll get to this a bit later. Uh, it's set to paint through. So now it actually painted through the entire thing. Uh, this was because we prepped a little bit before the video. <laughs> <laughs> so down here, this is actually super handy. It's a nice little trick here. If this is set to this icon and you paint, this is going to paint through the entire thing. Leaving you with no errors. Leaving you with no errors. Excellent. <laughs> but it means you are painting through the entire thing. If you click this guy here and uh, it's like this and we paint, uh, we paint here now. Now you're going to see that we get a bunch of errors because this here is not based on the model. This is based on what's called the paint buffer. So you can see the paint buffer if you hold on the Z key and you just drag here now. So now you can start to see it here. So now you get a little, it, it just looks like we're zooming, but we're actually just moving the paint buffer. So you can see here now it says uh, uh, 2K 16 bit and paintable. This means that um, the paint buffer now is uh, 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. The, the information will paint in 16 bit as opposed to 8 bit, and we can indeed paint on this. 
So the paint buffer is essentially like painting on a pane of glass. It means that whatever you're doing here can is currently live. So you can use something like, uh, we'll cover this a bit later on as well, the warp tool. And now any painting here, we can now modify. But once it's baked down onto the model, like you can see this painting here, you can no, no, no longer modify this using a tools like this. Once it's baked down, hit in the B key, you can no longer edit what's here. Now it's baked down here. And you can see you get a bunch of these, these nasty little errors here. So that is one of the real core concepts in Mari. Be aware that everything is being painted on a paint buffer. Yeah, like you saw before, you can't paint outside the little rectangular yeah. paint so you buffer. You see here where the rectangle here is. If you go to P and we now just make sure here, you can see that it stops right here. So this is why a lot of people prefer to paint like this. Problem is now you're wasting a crazy amount of space here. Yeah, you can paint <laughs> everywhere, but it means that, at least if you do this, but it means that you're wasting so much space. So I prefer to leave this at 2K like this. But let's go into the settings for the paint buffer. You do this under painting. This is Dr. Sky. And um, we don't have to look at this. This is um, a bit hardcore, a <laughs> bunch of settings. But we go into paint buffer and here you can see paint buffer. So 16-bit, uh, this is this is useful if you're painting something like bump map or you, your source images are 16-bit. For regular painting, you can set this to 8-bit. Yeah, like all images you find on the internet, they're going to be 8-bit anyway. Like yeah. if you get them straight off of Google, they'll be 8-bit. For sure. So, But if you're using, if you're using like something like um, the XR generated in ZBrush from Alpha or something, hmm. then, they're, then it might be 16-bit if you set that up. But in general, you can leave this to 8-bit. Uh, the buffer size as well is also just set to 2K. And uh, here you can see that uh, uh, this is a scale of uh, the paint buffer here. So uh, if you hold on the Z key, let's just uh, do that, you can see this changes here. And by default as well, this is here is also actually enabled, reset on bake, which means that if this here is um, completely reset and uh, you change the paint buffer, and now we paint a little bit here, and then we bake it down, you see now the paint buffer is going to reset. So you're like, whoa, where, where did it go? It actually just changed the size here. That's an obscure value. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's weird. <laughs> 1. So, 1.49917. <laughs> so you should set this here to one, maybe a bit less, bit less here, just so I can actually see the data here. So like this. And uh, and then you want to set enable on bake to disable. I, I have no idea why this is a feature you want here. I, this is one of the first things I do. Uh, also, you can see here that if we hit, uh, if we do more painting, that this is baked down. The moment we rotate now, this is being baked down, and it's cleared from the paint buffer. So this is this can be handy. Like let's say you're doing a lot of hand painting here, you're painting now, and now you rotate. Now it's baked down. I prefer to not do, to keep it like this. There's a setting here which is bake behavior, which is auto bake and clear, which is exactly what you just saw. You paint something, you rotate, it bakes it down, and it clears the paint buffer. I prefer to keep this set to manual. What manual is doing, like this is a fairly big, this is a fairly big change to how it works. This is now, if you paint something now, and you rotate, nothing's happening. So now you can go in here and you can really, really just warp this around. So you can just warp this to your heart's content. You can keep painting on it, you can erase from it, etc. And now you can bake it down. So, and it's still live. So this means that um, you have to clear it yourself. The hotkey for this is Control, Shift, and C. So whenever I'm, I'm painting with this, uh, it, this sounds a bit cumbersome, but it, the way I'm painting is I paint like this, then I hit the B key, and then Control, Shift, C. This is just this is just a part of how I'm working out. Like it, it sounds a bit cumbersome, but I prefer this workflow for a couple of reasons. Uh, first off, if you're painting something which is a bit repetitive, let's say you're doing like a, a stroke like this, and uh, you have a bunch of these strokes, you can now just do hit the B key. And you can now just move this and you get the exact same stroke. Uh, this is also really useful when we're projecting images, which we'll cover a bit later on as well, that um, you can just really warp the images without fear of losing what you have there. So that's pretty much a paint buffer for you. You're painting on a pane of glass, you're not painting on the normals. It's impossible to paint on the normals here, which means that for certain things that if you do a lot of hardcore painting, like just by hand, I actually do that sometimes in Substance or in ZBrush. Because um, if you pay, let's say you want to paint across all these things there and you have a bunch of things going on, uh, you're painting here, you now get a bunch of little errors here. 
If you were to do this exact same stroke in C versus Substance, this would be a nice continuous stroke because it would actually work across the model here. It's a very different kind of school of thought. Yeah, it you, really is. I mean, you do also have, like, so I prefer to do these kind of things in, in ZBrush, yeah. like I can't even say, but you do also have masking available, so you could project through, but mask on the other side. Yeah. That's sort of like a, a hacky way to get around it, yeah. perhaps. But if you want to do, like, straight on 3D painting, ZBrush yeah. or Substance is probably yeah. a better alternative in, in that regard. Yeah, sometimes I have to paint just a bunch of masks for um, for 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 shaders and stuff like that, and and then I'll I'll just do that straight mm. up in uh, in in a ZBrush. Just because if if you need to if you need to if you have a lot of a lot of uh, complexity in your model and you're doing this kind of stuff here, you're just getting a bunch of nasty errors. So you do <laughs> now have to go in and paint. If you're doing for simple models, it's perfectly fine. But um, yeah, but I, I mean, if you're doing any sort of stylized texturing. So the MR is probably not the optimal tool for that. No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think it is. I, I think something like Substance is probably better. For yeah. That. So you can do edge masking for this, which um, let's just see how this works. If you hit the comma key, you can now see there's an edge mask here, and if you now go to edge mask, you can now change the fall off of this. So that this is supposed to help you <laughs> <laughs> avoid these issues. So this is what Morton was talking about. Like beforehand. it's kind of a hack. Yeah. But it yeah, it's just masking based on the angles here, based on the curvature, I believe. So now you can see that if you disable this again, it's not gonna be as nasty. Mm. Uh, like you're not gonna get yeah, you could pair this with project through and then edge masking, yeah. and that would get you would get closer to the result. But you're still not painting on a 3D model; you're no. still painting on a pane of glass. So uh, the hotkey for uh, to enable this is the G key. Um, this is something I used to use a lot in the past, and you can see that you get you get a bit clearer results here. Mm -hmm. uh, if you hit the F1 key, F2, and F3, you can actually see what you're doing here. F1 is the, it's a perfectly flat image f2 is uh, with the, with light and shadows and f3 is with with the full-on shader so you can see you you don't get as harsh uh fall off anymore no. because there's a fall off on the on the mask now and it, it could help you yeah. perhaps but uh, just, just be aware of that yeah this is not a this is designed more to paint uh, with images yeah. and procedurals and all that kind of fancy stuff compared to pure painting. Yeah. So just just be clear on that, that if we do a lot of, like let's say you're spending a day just like doing fantastic little painting details and all this kind of stuff with tons of colors, I, I don't do that normally in um, in Mari. So with that said, let's look, let's, let's look at some actual brushes here. Uh, first, I'm just gonna clear all this kind of stuff here. And then let's go to layers, uh, and uh, can just create a new layer on top of this, and paint on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> we are covering layers a bit later on. So brushes are super handy. There are a bunch of really cool brushes here. The hotkey for that is P. So P is is a long way away from the regular navigation. So that is that is a little tip for you that you can remap this. We're not really going to cover remapping in this video, but if you are a bit more um, once you get a bit more advanced, you can remap keys. I've remapped that to the V key just because that's a bit bit closer because I actually have to move my hand a lot now for this. Maybe if you have massive hands, that's not an issue. You, you got to have massive hands though. <laughs> yeah, I guess really gotta. that's a long way away. <laughs> yeah. So if we go to um, tool properties here, we can now see that we have a bunch of brush settings here. Let's just dock this. And here we have stuff like radius, flow, and alpha and all this. You also have these up here as well. For the tool properties will also display the properties of any tool you you currently have selected. Down here, you, this is called a scratch pad. This is where you can see the stroke, but you can also paint here as well. So let's say you want to do some changes to your, you want to do some, uh, you want to do some opacity jitter or something. You can you can just see what it's going to look like instead of having to paint here and then screwing up your thing. You can just um, you can just try this right down here. Let's disable this again. <laughs> so I don't really do a whole lot here to be honest. Uh, the one thing they did add in uh, in Mari 4 is uh, Steady Stroke. Maybe that's... No, that's actually added in, in version 3, I believe. Sorry about that. Uh, and here, this is like... Um, uh, this here is like Lazy Mouse in ZBrush. This is really handy. Uh, I actually paint... Usually paint a bit with this active. Uh, just because this just gives you a lot nicer strokes here. You can see there is a... If we, if we exaggerate it a bit, you can see there is a bit of a tail lagging behind this. 
It just means that you're generally getting a bit a bit smoother results. For this though, we're just gonna disable this. Uh, so not a whole lot of settings in here. We actually have to tweak. Uh, most of them are just up here. You change the the radius by hitting the R key. Uh, this is how you just change the radius here, and you hit the, you change the opacity by holding down the O key. My God, all of it just makes sense. Yeah, hard <laughs> keys that ah, that's amazing. <laughs> So now you can just paint here, and you can just hit the R key to make it smaller. This, I actually really like this. This is this is a fairly efficient way of, of working here. Mm. Uh, but the real magic here comes with um, the brushes, which already exists in uh, the predefined brushes, which already exist in Mari. You can find these under shelf, and let's just dock these. So there are a bunch of brushes here, and I highly I highly recommend just going through all these because there are a bunch of super useful here ones here. But um, we're just going to cover quickly which ones we actually use, because there are way too many here. <laughs> you can see here, you had Brad's new brushes. I don't know who Brad is, but they're pretty cool brushes. Brad P? P Probably not. Yeah, no. no he, was, he was a motor guy. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe just a dude called Brad. <laughs> so I, I generally prefer to just use uh, the organic brushes and, um, and the basic brushes. One you're going to be using a lot is honestly just the default one. Uh, nothing fancy about this. It's just a default brush, which has pen pressure enabled. You sometimes also want the hard brush, which is exactly the same, <laughs> just super hard. And then we have super smooth. This is exactly super right. smooth. <laughs> yeah, this is really nice. This is like if you just want to have a hint of something. If you're doing a mask or something, and you really just want to have like a super smooth result, therefore the name super smooth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we have um, this is where I find the, the most of your useful brushes here. Yeah. For sure. So there are just a bunch of these, like vascular, and I don't generally use a lot of these. So I'll just cover some of the ones I use here. This took me like three years to find a few good ones I really, I really prefer. But I feel like that's the case often. You get yeah. often get overwhelmed with different kinds of brushes, and you can you download brushes, and I, I even believe you can import Photoshop brushes into mm. it. Like there's a way to do it. Mm, you might be able um, to. But you find a few good ones, and you stick with those for yeah. like the rest of your career. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, uh, so here, here's a little tip as well. If you hit the D key, you can you can change you can make the colors here go back to the default one, and if you hit the X key, you can swap between these. So we can just swap between uh, black and white right now. This is super handy if you are painting a mask, for instance, which we'll cover a bit later on. Uh, so the brushes I prefer to use is Octo Skin. This is super cool. This this allows you just to get really interesting results right away. So if you hit, uh, I believe the E key, this is now. Um, uh, paint buffer eraser. So now you can do the same thing here, and now you can just uh, oh, oops. paint buffer eraser, and now you can just start erasing this as well. And and if you so if you use the octo skin with essential additive and subtractive by adding using the p the p brush oh sorry the the p brush <laughs> by using the p hotkey <laughs> and then the e e hotkey to re remove it then you get this really nice and organic feel this like crackle little result here i really are this is a, this is a way I'm, I'm painting a lot of uh, a lot of um a lot of things so then we have um we also have uh, let's see pepper this is pretty much the same thing as uh with um with the other one with the eraser as well i've set this eraser to pepper you now get this really nice and organic result here. This is super handy if you have like two colors and need to blend them together uh, in a in a more organic fashion. Instead of just being like a uh, instead of it being like a soft blend between them, you can now just get this really nice and organic result here. And then we have um, let's go to back to this and let's go back to uh, shelf. And let's look at what else we have here. I mean, there are so many brushes <laughs> here. So um, test them all out. Yeah, it's gonna take you a few test years. Them all out. <laughs> so this is also real nice. Sorry about that. Uh, shelf and dock this over again. Pillowy. Pillow. Yeah, this is super nice. This is like um, it has a bit of texture to it, but it um, but it's also very soft. So this is super nice if you want to do like if you want to do exactly that something soft, but uh, with some definition to it. We also have um, fingerprints. These are super nice if you want to make fingerprints. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's very specific. <laughs> it's a very specific kind of brush. Yeah. Don't use that a whole lot, but sometimes if you're doing like if you're doing like hard surface objects, you might want to do a bit of like fingerprint and a specular map or something mm. like that. Maybe if you're doing like a 
clay thing. Yeah, Something exactly. Feels handmade. Exactly. This is also really nice. Uh, the T Rex brush. First, it has a cool name. It's called uh, T Rex, uh, but also it, it, it's kind of the same as uh, the pillar one. That it has uh, it has some definition to it, without uh, uh, and some pattern to it. So it's it's a good mix of that. Kind of looks like uh, the render cloud features in Photoshop. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but it's called the T Rex. Oh yeah, so it's way cooler. Yeah, exactly. And then I don't really use this a lot, but it's called Sexy Oil. So I feel we just gotta mention it. <laughs> <laughs> so those are pretty much the brushes I use here. So if you wanna if you wanna store these in a preset or in a in a collection here, if you hit the K key, uh, this is how you um, can bring up all these brushes as well here. So you can. Um, you can just go in uh, paint, hit the K key, and just uh, go in here and just change the brush here. But you can also just drag and drop from, from here into here. So if you go to um, personal brushes, you can just disable, remove all these, which doesn't work for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so we can just you can just go in here and you can just drag whatever brush you want in here as well. So if you want octo skin, you just drag whatever brushes you want in here. So let's go oh, back. The classic to... fish egg brush. <laughs> yes. You know, very useful. <laughs> so um, super handy here. Just drag whatever brush you want in here, and now you can just go into personal and you can just start painting in here. The fish egg brush. Nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's pretty much brushes. Um, they, these these work with a lot of different tools like paint through, which we're gonna cover as well. So brushes, super useful. Let's kill this again. And then let's look, let's look through layers. So layers, and let's just dock this, and now we can disable this. And delete all layers for now. So um, now this becomes super transparent, which I, I actually can't look at this. My eyes go crazy right away. <laughs> so let's fill this with something. So um, uh, let's do a color. So you can do that by just hitting the tab key. Yeah, exactly. I this is the same as in Nuke as well. If you hit the tab key, I, to be perfectly honest, this is a bit embarrassing, but I have no idea where anything lives down here. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no re there's no need to know anymore. No, I know the names of them. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you hit the tab key and hide tab color, you get a just a fill color here. So you can now just change this here, and you can now just change this to whatever color you want. Um, if you click this guy here, you make a new layer. So here we can just start painting something here. Hit the D key to reset this, and then just paint something here. So what's the difference between the color one and the layer one then? So the color one, this is uh, here you can paint whatever. Well, this is a fill layer. This mm. only has this is a procedural one, which only has uh, which only has one color here. Okay. So we use this a lot as well because you can mask them out. Let's say you want to make a black and white mask. You can make this here. Um, black and you can make another color of fill on top and you can just mask between the two. So I use this actually a fair bit. So now you can just paint this here. If you use um, the J key, you can change the color. So uh, really, really quite handy. If you hit the C key, you get a color picker. And uh, go back here. So um, very quickly just change, you very quickly just um, color pick something and just start painting again. Hit the B key to bake it down. And you can now just change the blending mode to this. You have a bunch of different blending modes here. You want to set this to multiply, uh, it will just set it to multiply. So is this the blending mode, is that affected by if you're painting 8-bit or 16-bit? I am actually not sure. Hmm. Okay. I was, th right I was thinking about it like in the same way that Photoshop, you know, you have different, you have access to different kind of blending modes yeah. depending on uh, what kind of bit depth you have. No, that's actually an interesting question. If any one of you know, just let us know in the comments. Mm. Uh, uh, that's a good question. See, we're, you learn so many things all the time when doing this kind of stuff. Like I, I never use Mari. I use Mari like here and there. Mm. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm as fresh as you guys yeah. watching right now. <laughs> Which is actually really cool because I'm working and ask questions. Yeah. So I use it sometimes like if I, and then I have to relearn it. So I do <laughs> yeah. like, I do like a 30 minute walk through my head. Okay, where are things now? Yeah. And then I do that and then I forget about it again. Yeah. So here you also have opacity here. Uh, sometimes I just do opacity instead of uh, turning on and off, which you can do here. Because uh, sometimes this gets really heavy. Turning on and off sometimes gets heavy, but turning down opacity for some reason is faster. Computers, man. Yeah, computers. <laughs> uh, we also have adjustment layers here, such as invert. Super nice. And then we have uh, we have grade. Grade is something you're going to be using a whole lot. And all of these, they, they work with the tab. Yes, so the tab exactly. Key thing as well. So like I said, I'll usually just do grade and just do this. 
and just get it here. Yeah. You delete the layer by clicking on this guy, the minus one. And so this is essentially where you're changing most things like white point, black point. Uh, I usually just use it for, for the gain and um, if you want to offset something or gamma. So this is your essentially your go-to node for, for grading anything here. So um, I definitely recommend looking through all these here before you start using the tab key, just because you're not going to know what anything is called. <laughs> yeah. So um, clamp as well, super useful. This will just clamp everything between zero and one. We, because um, if if you if, if you export out something which might be above one, maybe the shader goes a bit crazy. And we have contrast, which does exactly that. It uh, you can change the pivot for the contrast as well, uh, just depending on what you want. By default, this is at 0.5. If you hit the R key here, this resets everything. And what else we have, which is useful of, of adjustment layers? HSL, uh, hue, saturation, lightness. We change the exactly that Whoa, hue, the saturation. Party monster. <laughs> and uh, lightness. <laughs> so quite handy stuff here as well. And let's see if there's anything else. Um, saturation as well. If you just want to do a quick saturation, just create something up and down. Uh, quite handy. But yeah, de definitely just go through some of these here. If you if you know grade, hue, saturation, and uh, value or lightness, these two here, invert, and and that's that's kind of it. You you'll definitely be using a lot of the, the other ones once in a while. But if you have those, you're fine. And then we have uh, procedurals. So this is where you can add stuff like the color. This is where you saw what we did before. This is where we have a color. We have. Um, Stuff like projections, like if you want to do a triplanar, we're definitely doing videos on triplanars in the future. We can do stuff like um, a UV mask. We can do like uh, ambient inclusion here. We can do procedurals, such as uh, adding a cloud to it. Now we're getting into Photoshop cloud territory. Whoa. Now you don't have to use fancy. the T-Rex T -Rex brush anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly. done. So now you can combine some of these and you can do, this is going to be pretty advanced texturing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so you set this to multiply now. And uh, you are done with your texture. <laughs> yeah, publish, approved. Pu publish, and you are done. Watch <laughs> it on the cinema screen. <laughs> so this is how you, you'll often do this. Like you're, you'll do a couple of these cool uh, procedurals, combine them in crazy ways, mask them out, and um, and then you you'll just use that as a base for something more advanced here. Uh, one thing I want to cover as well is uh, real quick is um, is the tile one. The tile one is really useful. So if you just hit tiled, get this one up here. So this essentially allows you to tile something across. For that mm. to work though, we quickly just have to look at the image manager, which is docked this here. And where did it go? It went all the way here. So we already have some images prepared for this on our second monitor. Nice. Actually, a fun, fun story. I used this on uh, the latest Kingsman film, mm. the tile node there, because I was using, we had this platform that needed to be, you know, that diamond metal stuff. Mm. It's like the 45 degree angle diamond metal. And uh, in order to get that in ZBrush, I needed to subdivide it up to some, I don't know, crazy hundreds yeah, of yeah, millions yeah. of polygons because it was really close up. Instead, I just, uh, f I just made like a little thing in Photoshop that was tileable, mm -hmm. threw it into Mari, and now I have a perfect map. Yeah. And then I'm done. Yeah. You know, I just export that out as my displacement map instead of having to do that all in geometry. Really, really handy to use this. Yeah, this yeah. is one of the, the tile ones, one of the ones I use the most. So you can just drag from the image manager and over here, and boom, instant skin. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> perfect tileable for some internet we found online. Yeah, exactly. From so, image we found. <laughs> some internet we found. Online. So now you can obviously see there are seams everywhere now because of this. Uh, but we can set the repeat amount here. So set this into something like seven. And you can just see uh, that really made it less uh, repeatable. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But th this is this is a base. Like yeah. often you you set this here to like three or something like. That. And this image also has to be tileable. This image is currently not tileable. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is this is something you'll use a lot here. So you can do. Um, this is a really powerful node. Yeah, this is incredibly useful. So layer? Can, no, is it an? I guess it's. It's, a, it's an adjustment layer. Yeah. Yeah. Or procedural. Adjustment but they have layer. the whole. They, don't they have the whole node view now? Yeah, actually? they have a whole no, node view. Which, yeah, we're uh, not gonna go into that. We. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is one of the segments we're not doing. You can see. You can see they have node graph down here, which is super powerful, and it's so powerful that we are not even gonna mention <laughs> this in this video here. <laughs> That's gonna be a whole thing on by itself. Devin Morton, you keep spoiling our plans. You keep mine simple. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but the tile one is phenomenally mm. useful here. So it just allows you to get a super quick base here and um, just drag and drop images in here. And uh, this is where, like, 
your image library is really useful. Like the better your images are, the better, the, the faster your textures can get going here. So this brings us to masking actually. So let's say you want to mask out some of these things here. Like we only want this to be in certain areas. So we have two kinds of masking. We have the regular um, uh, layer mask, which is the exact same way it works in Photoshop. So let's just try this out. So now by default, nothing has happened. Uh, hit the K key, and I just want to get one of these little guys here. So if you hit white, paint with white, nothing is going to happen. If you paint with black, you are now erasing from this. So if you now hit bake, B for bake, we've now successfully just erased from from this mask here. Now, if you want to get something back in here, you can just uh, paint with the black or paint with white again now, and again just toggle the X key between these two here. This is something you will be using a whole lot. So um, this is where I was saying before, like the super soft one can be really quite useful. If you want to blend between this, you mm. want to have the, the softest blend in the world here. And I do apologize for making the ugliest textures known to <laughs> man in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> so what if you wanted to get away from masking? Let's say you wanted to make, you wanted to make adjustments to this layer now. Let's like say you want to paint some more on top of it or something. Because right now you're in masking mode, right? Uh, yes, uh, so, you, so you can't paint on top of this because this is a procedural. You can see this. You, you, mm. you actually can't paint on top of these at all. So the only thing you can do with this one is now you want to... Um, oh, you can change the image or something. Yeah, you can change the image. So if you, let's say you want to convert, you want to actually paint on top of this now, uh, you can see that this, again, is, is a live layer. So anything we put in here is live. If you want to actually paint on this, you can't. So you're going to be like, whoa, why is, why is nothing happening? <laughs> uh, it's because it's, it's a procedural. So if you want to do that, you have to convert to paintable right here, which will we're not going to do that because that might take a bit of time depending on it. Yeah, but you can see they have different icons yeah. in, in the layer stack there, whether it's a procedural, paintable, mask, yeah, you get whatever this nice it is. Little paintable thing if you're a renaissance <laughs> painter <laughs> so now you can see this one you can paint on mm. based on this icon and this you cannot and also it depends where you are if you click on this you are currently on the tiled one if you click on this you are currently in the layer mask so layer masks are the easiest thing in the world like it's it's literally a black and white image you are painting on so let's just dele delete the layer mask here so let's see where we find this um, layer mask and here you have just remove mask you can also do uh, layer mask here and you can do add mask and you can choose if you want to reveal everything or hide everything. If you choose hide everything, that's simply just uh, filling everything with black instead of filling it with white. So you can also shift click on it here to disable the mask altogether. Quite useful. So layer mask and you have a bunch of different settings here in general convert mask and all these. So remove <laughs> mask. Uh, so next one we're going to cover is, this is one I use the most, to be honest. This is a layer stack. This is something which Photoshop doesn't have. So um, a layer stack is, um, is essentially that. It's a stack of stuff here. So if we click on this guy, you can now just bring this up here. And um, now you can see that we have a mask here. And we, we just have a bunch of layers here now. The reason this is more powerful is that you can now use a bunch of adjustment layers and procedurals and everything you want. So if you now paint this here, you can now um, hit the tab key, which for some reason doesn't work. <laughs> we can just go in here and hit invert. And now the entire mask is going to be inverted. And we can go in here and we can set something like, uh, we can do a little fractal, we can do a little cloud. Uh, and now you can see it's masked by that. We can set this here now to multiply. Just a happy little cloud. Happy little cloud. <laughs> so now you can see it's only going to affect the, this area here. So this is incredibly powerful. Uh, and honestly, I I most of the time don't really use um, uh, the layer mask here. I, I most of the time just use to go straight to a mask stack. Just because this is so much more scalable. There might be time where you only need uh, the, the layer mask, but uh, I, I prefer to just use this pretty much all the time here. So um, we can uh, do the same thing here, layer mask, uh, and just remove the mask here. Okay. So this brings us to um, adjustment stacks as well. So you saw here before, we can do adjustment stack, uh, just adjustments on top here. We can do a little gamma to gamma up and down. Super nice. But you can do, do this also only on the layer. So if you right click now, you can do adjustment stack, add adjustment stack, and you can add a grade here now. So now you can see the icon here changed, or you add, add a little icon here. So if you click it now, you can do the same thing, add this on top, and now we have a grade which will only affect this specific layer. 
This is really, really useful. And this is something you're probably going to be using a whole lot here. So the cool thing here is that this here is also, you can also combine this with layer masks and layer stacks here. So you can get crazy complex networks here. <laughs> so if you want to make this grade node only work on certain parts, you can just paint it out here. Hit the B key. And now you can see it only works here. So th this here gets pretty deep. You can even do, you can even paint, uh, reduce this, and you can even do a, a mask stack in this. <laughs> and now you can go up here. And now I can paint in here. And now on this mouse stack, you can now add, you can now add an invert, and you're just going crazy here. Like stuff, life is going just going crazy because now you you're stacking stuff and nesting stuff on top of each other. This is like creation of the universe. Kind yeah, of complexity. Now. <laughs> exactly. You pretty much made. Yeah, you pretty much yeah. made the universe within <laughs> this now. So um, if you want to go back into this, just click here. And now you can see the grade node has a mass stack and the mass stack has an invert to it. Nice. So I normally try to keep the complexity a bit lower than this because this just gets a bit crazy. Do you know if there's like a depth level? Like how many, how many Probably levels? Can... infinite. Yeah. Mari. Yeah, yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend going here. It's crazy. But you can, which is quite useful. So if you want to remove this, same thing. Right click, adjustment stack and remove adjustment stack. So that's uh, nice. that's <laughs> spring cleaning. That's spring cleaning. So this was a long explanation talking about uh, the tiled one, talking about uh, mask stacks, and talking about adjustment. Uh, what are you called? Adjustment stacks. It's yeah. Adjustment stacks. Like the mask stacks are really powerful. Yeah. They are. Yeah. So this is something you are going to be using most likely a whole lot. So this is this is essentially it for layers. You're sure there's more stuff here. Like oh, should probably mention renaming. Double click. And just uh, smash your keyboard a few times. <laughs> um, you can also search for stuff up here as well, which is quite handy if you want to do like digger, digger, digger. <laughs> the classic dist dist name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but that that's essentially it. Oh, one last little thing as well for layers. You can color them. Nice. Oh yeah. This is something I do only if I'm giving away my my Mari archive to somebody else. Because otherwise, this is just a bit too flamboyant for me. Like, there is no, there is no reason to to add colors just to add colors. It could be nice to keep track of it from like an for organizational sure. point of view. Like, for if you sure. have a lot of layers, say like all the red ones will be yeah. my procedurals that do this thing. Absolutely, or whatever. absolutely, definitely useful for to keep stuff simple. Mm. So, super nice painting here, honey. Good job. <laughs> yeah. So let's just go through some actual tools now. So, like we mentioned, up here is select. I, I never, this is like the first time I ever hit this key up here when we made this video, because I only use the S key. Um, this is like a sticky key, so if you're in painting mode and you hit the S key, um, you you can just, um, you can just hit, um, you can just very quickly just select something here. Then we have um, the paint tool, which we've all recovered. Control Shift H to bring this back. So paint tool, we've all recovered that one. Simply allows you to paint, very simple tool here. Uh, very powerful, doesn't do a whole lot, but what it does is useful. So just paint here. I mean, it essentially does what you need to do in Mari. Yes. So that's. Uh... <laughs> and then we have the blur tool, which will. Maybe you'll guess what the blur tool is gonna do. <laughs> Any oh, guesses, know. Martin? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I I, I got nothing. Okay. Got nothing here. Oh, it's gonna blur it. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Who knew? Amazing. So this is actually a tool you're gonna use a fair bit. Like obviously you're not gonna blur a stroke like this because that's stupid. But if you um if you want to blur a texture or you get seams, maybe sometimes you get displaced some seams from Seedbirch, you can bring them in here and you can use the blur tool for them. Mm. A bit hacky, but uh, blur tool used a little bit here. Uh, paint buffer eraser. It's exactly that. That's going to erase from the hotkey here is E. That's gonna, just going to erase from this. this used to, I believe this was just called the eraser tool, which confused a lot of people. Because you see that you can't actually erase from this layer here. You, you can't erase what's baked down? No, you can only mask it out. You can. What you can do, though, has a little thing here. You can set this here to clear. You're going to clear it out. Uh, and now you can. Uh, but now you're so now just to clarify, now you're painting in clear mode. Yeah, so that is nasty. Be, I, I, rec <laughs> I highly recommend not to do that. So you can do it, mm. but I highly recommend if you want to remove something from layer, use a mask here. So, yeah, so that's, that's why it's a little confusing. Yeah, it's it is. A... <laughs> uh, and then we have paint through. Paint through. You're gonna live through paint through. Paint through is amazing. So this means that if you have, um, let's make sure this layer has nothing on it here. And um, now we can just drag an image in here. 
and now you can just paint through. My god! <laughs> so you can see here now you have your image here, and um, you can see what tool you have here uh, based on the HUD. And uh, the hotkey here is Control, Shift, and this left mouse button to, to scale up and down. You can control um, this Control drag, uh, control, or Control left mouse button just to rotate here. And uh, that's pretty much it for the tool in terms of that. You, you paint through, and uh, that's, that's kind of so it. So what's the difference between paint and paint through when you're using a texture like this? So you can't use this with a with the regular paint tool. Uh, no, this is this is a specific tool for mm -hmm. this. So you you can use brushes though. Yeah. So you can use all the brushes we just found here. So we can use the. Little... And then you're basically projecting onto the mesh with the current brush with yes. the texture. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So uh, so paint is straight up just paint a color in here. It's white. <laughs> well, the paint through is. Yeah, actual an actual image here. So not to be confused with the paint through when you're in paint mode and you're projecting or baking <laughs> onto your mesh. No, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the cool thing about this is you can use a ton of other tools with this as well. And you can do something like repeat, which means you, it's just going to be repeated across here. Uh, Control Shift C to clear it. So let's say we want to scale this down and now we can just if this was tileable and not just an image from Google, <laughs> you, you can see that this would just tile perfectly across here. So this just means you can just... So imagine this was tileable. Imagine. Use your imagination. <laughs> you can also hit the stamp key, which just stamps down everything here, which is quite useful. So hit the repeat key again if you just want to stamp it down once, like this. So uh, this is, again, why I prefer to keep uh, under painting here, keep this here to set to manual instead of all being clear. Let's again go through this, because this is one of the main points. So um, we now, oh, see here? Now I try to rotate, and now it's baked down, and it's cleared, which is really annoying. So currently here, I, let's say I want to blend these two here together. So I'm going in here, and I just want to blend these two here a little bit here. And I'm like, all right, let's just maybe just rotate the view a little bit here, and ah, oh, shit, now it's gone. Now it's... If only there was a way to foresee that this would happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. If only there was a... If only <laughs> Henny and Morton had a little way here. <laughs> so if we now go back here to painting and set this to manual, I also see how it disappeared. Mm. Super handy. So now if we do this, we're going to blend this here together. You can now just blend this and now you're like, maybe I just want to rotate this a little bit. Uh, uh, in order to switch, uh, to go away from the paint tool, I just hit the P key to go to... Um, just to go to the paint tool. So now you're like, ah, oh, maybe I can just rotate this a little here and just like go around this. And we can also use a couple of tools here, like the warp tool, which is a natural segue into the warp tool. My God, so smooth. <laughs> yeah, so smooth, thank you. So now you can just, um, you can select what points you want here. And you can actually, you can, you can um, select each point here and just drag the points here, or you can select all the points and move them or you can select all the points and hold the control key wherever, and now you can just do this. You can also add more points to the lattice and stuff, right? Yeah, so it's... If you go up here, you can do this. If you want really fine control here, <laughs> like you really want to blend this, this is something I do a lot. So I just go here and I just go, uh, just go here, and you're just like warping these guys here. Mm. Well, it's going to be quite useful. You can toggle the grid so that you can... Uh, see what you're doing? You can actually see what you're doing. <laughs> That's normally not a problem if, you, if you're this light here, but um, it, gets, it gets a bit dense after a while. So this is one of the tools you're probably going to be using a whole lot in conjunction with a paint through tool. So you can just go a bit crazy here and just warp this together here. And now we can hit the bake tool. And you can see that now it's baked down, but we still have our data here. So let's say you want to use this for something else. This is something I, I use a whole lot. Now you can just go here and you can just warp this again, disable this. Um, I believe you can also do this. There's a hotkey for this. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so now you can um, you can just go through this and you can just warp this around and uh, hit the B key again. And now finally you can hit the Control Shift C key just to clear the entire thing. So that is really the reason I, I have the manual mode active. So you can also use um, a tool here called the Slurp tool. The Slurp oh, yeah. tool is is kind of like liquefy. So if you do this here now uh, and just paint the super quickly. In. You can now go in here, uh, sorry, in here, and use slurp tool. Same hotkey as um, before, R key to move it. And now you can just move this up here as well. 
So th this is if you want like some really fine precision, you really want these scales here just to perfectly, like you see the scale here is now aligning, and that's just, you really just have the fine control here. So I use this in conjunction with the warp tool. Hit the B key to bake it down. And the other tools here, I don't, I don't really use a whole lot. Uh, same with these, we don't really use a whole lot of these tools here. So, I mean, essentially, these are the tools I use for the majority of my painting here. You paint using the regular paint tool, you paint through using the paint through tool, and you use the warping tools or the slurp tool to do this as well. This is something I've also mapped to hotkeys as well, uh, which we can cover in a, in a different video, just how to do that and how to optimize it. But um, this is um, th these are probably the tools you'll be using most of the time. I feel like we're promising a lot of Mari content here. <laughs> oh, we are. Oh, oh you bet. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a ton of Mari content. I also want to cover briefly the clone stamp tool. So uh, as a texture artist, you're going to be living for the clone stamp tool. <laughs> <laughs> so very simple stuff. You hold on the control key and um, you just paint from that point. You can see we got a blue little line here now, a blue little point. And now you just start painting, and now you can just start cloning stuff out here. Really clone that watermark. Mm, yeah. That's... yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Credit to uh, stuck something? <laughs> Photo stuck? Uh, no. Uh, I, I, there I, is no, no credit in that. <laughs> so welcome the clone to tool. The effects. Yeah, welcome to effects. Clone tool, super useful here. Uh, we're not going to cover this too much mm. uh, in depth here. You can change the source up here, but. Um, it's a pretty simple tool, but very effective. Yeah. Go back to the paint tool. You can just paint tool. <laughs> uh, again, Control Shift C to clear the buffer here. And um, so once we, these are pretty much all the tools you're going to be using here. So if you use these tools, you now created some beautiful textures here. So once you've done this, let's look at the channels. Let's kill all this stuff here because that's not relevant anymore. And dock this here. So now you can now see we have one channel up here called color. This was the one we created right in the beginning. Yeah, exactly. So uh, usually in production, this is called something like albedo, or it's like RGB, or it's like called one. Uh, fairly standard naming for this. Just whatever naming you choose, just make sure this is consistent and you always have the same naming for this kind of stuff here. So um, what you need to know here is essentially scalar data. Is this here scalar data or not? And what this means is, is this influenced by color space or not? We're not going into color space in this video here because that is definitely a topic for another time here. We have experts to do that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but So essentially here, if, um, if it's a scalar channel, that would be something like a displacement map or a mask or specular maps or something like that. Mm -hmm. That would be a scalar map. If it's something which deals with color, it would most likely not be a scalar map. So if you want to make a new channel here, you can just make a little name to it. Let's say this is a spec R map for specular roughness. We can change this here to a 1K map. And we don't need, for this, we don't need anything more than 8-bit here. You can also set a color here, just what color do you want to fill this with. It's going to default to 50% gray. And I would just do this. And now we have a spec R map. And so this, yeah, but this is fine. Uh, you can also create quick channels up here if you want a really quick uh, white channel. This is something you sometimes want. Just quick white and gray. You can delete them by clicking this guy. And you can convert them by clicking here. This is if you want to convert from an 8-bit to a 32-bit or vice versa. So that's just gonna, you can, if you want to make this channel here as uh, an 8-bit, you just cl click here and hit convert. I mean, one thing that's good to note about that is uh, when you're converting an 8-bit to 16 or 32, you're not going to gain no. the, the, <laughs> the data that you would have no. in those maps. No. So you yeah, know, it's, not like, it's not like a magic button that just fills no. it in. <laughs> no, it's not. It, it's more that if you are, let's say you have tons of procedurals and all yeah. that, that is going to work. Uh, it's more if you want to... Yeah, if you are working in 8-bit and you, and you want to make the map now 16-bit, you just got to repaint the entire thing. Yeah. But with something like this, this this image here is 8-bit. It doesn't matter if this is 32-bit or whatnot. It's it's never going to go above 8-bit. So channels, very simple stuff here, which leads us to our next point, which is shaders. Shaders is where we can... Uh, this is I mean, this is the final thing for texturing. Texturing is essentially just how how light reacts when something hits a surface here. And we got to describe that through a shader. So we currently have a shader here. If you hit uh, current channel, this is a, the, the most basic shader in the world. Like you can change the diffuse amount or whatnot, but this is not a, this is not a good shader in any way. 
So um, this is where you can set this here to like current layer, current layer and below, and just current paint target. Quite useful stuff. But what we are interested in here is all these shaders here. So these are just a bunch of shaders like Fury Material, uh, Principle BRDF Material AI Standard, which works with uh, Arnold. You have Redshift Architectural, which works with Redshift. And uh, we're just gonna look at the BRDF here. So this is where you can input your different maps here. So in here, in diffuse color, you can set this to color one. And uh, right now we uh, we can set um, uh, the glossiness to specular roughness here. So if we now want to uh, paint some specular roughness here, first let's just, um, uh, this has now been overwritten here. Uh, this, the glossiness here has been overwritten because we plugged in a map in here now. Uh, but now we can go to our uh, channels. If you hit the I key, you can quickly, to quickly toggle between these. So currently this is set to color one. We want to set this here to specular, to spec R. So not sure if you can really see this here, but we will now be painting directly in this channel here. So you can do tons of cool stuff here. Th and this is definitely for another video as well, where you um, you can just paint, where you can just set up, up uh, crazy cool channels here and you can just get a pretty pretty accurate result. Yeah, you can get some here. really nice shaders look like, Get your shaders looking really nice within Mario now. Yeah, you really can. And uh, and if if it's based on the same uh, same material you're using in your render engine, it's pretty much going to work right away. But just know that here you could plug in your various maps here, like ambient occlusion, bump, whatever, and um, and you can just get a fairly accurate view of what this is going to look like. Again, covering that in a separate video, so we're keeping that deliberately light in this one. A lot of videos coming up from Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited about that. And um, so if you want to export out your maps here now, you go to channels, let's again cut, kill this, channels, and dock this. And now we can just hit right click and just hit export flattened. And you just select where you want your maps to go. Make sure this is here set to um, dollar UDEM. This is mean that it's, it's gonna correctly export out based on the UDEM tag. You can also set the dollar, uh, dollar sign channel, which is gonna export out the channel name you have. So this is gonna be spec R and this is gonna be color one. So you can also just brute force this here to be like uh, color one, maybe you wanted a separate name for this. So you can just brute force all this here. Um, and then you just hit export selected patches if you have something selected or export all patches. And this is just going to export out all your maps and they'll be ready to use in uh, in something like V-Ray or whatever render engine you prefer to use in it. Now that's how you texture. And that is how you texture. <laughs> <laughs> so we promise we'll, we, we are going to get videos on how to actually texture in the future. Yeah. We just want to keep this video here fairly light. I mean, I know it's already been a long time in, in this video, but we, we, we just want to keep this fairly light in terms of features. Uh, just to um, end this video here, we're just going to cover some uh, nice little Mari hotkeys for you guys. These are some of the, use, the hotkeys we use the most here. So uh, Control Shift C is clear the paint buffer. A K brings up the brushes. The R key resizes the brush size. S is for select. L is images. I is the channel. Uh, it can do channel layers. Uh, U is to paint through. P is for paint, and J is for color. So we uh, just take a screenshot of this <laughs> if you want to. Um, and um, the, these are the ones we are going to be using for most of the time while painting Amari. So we really hope there's, this here has been useful and that uh, you can now get started with painting in Mari based on this. If you have any questions or if you have suggestions for Mari tutorials you want to see or any corrections, just uh, just let us know in the comments. Yeah, we have a lot of this stuff coming up in the near future. Yeah. So make sure to stay uh, subscribed, like, comment this video if yeah. you want to see more. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys.